Hello and welcome. This is Ekiti on the move. I am Tunji Saliu. In case you're still looking at agriculture or farming as the age-long pedestrian and poor enterprise, the story is already changing right here in Ekiti State. First, let's have the quick takes. Agribusiness, Ekiti's transformational approach to agriculture. In spite of the vast arable land that supports a variety of crops, favorable climate across regions, local expertise that dates back to St. Eric's, and a preponderance of population involved in farming in Nigeria, agriculture has remained at a subsistence level over the years. This is why, despite more than 70% of the population engaged in farming, the contribution of this sector to the GDP and foreign exchange has never been optimal, and it has deemed it over the years. However, if it is stayed under the leadership of Dr. Kyle Defiami, is set to change this narrative. It starts from getting the meat right, and this the state has done by its policy and approach to agriculture. A change of focus on farming and agriculture as a government social service to a commercial and private sector driven approach aptly tagged agribusiness. With these, the administration hopes to achieve its well thought out vision of sustainable food security, creation of employment opportunities, and fostering agro based industrial development for poverty alleviation and wealth creation. The major occupation in Ekiti State is agriculture. And what we are doing is to take agriculture from the level of culture to agro-business, whereby we don't see it as, as more of a practice, but as a profession, whereby people could be proud. People could come out to associate and go outside to introduce themselves and be proud to call themselves farmers. It's on record that the top elites in Ekiti State, most of them are product of cocoa because so them were trained with cocoa money. And a visit to any community in Nikiti will show you that most upstairs you see in the state, they are owned by cocoa farmers. So if, if, our, if our forefathers could do that and produce a very comfortable environment, livelihood for themselves, what stops us from, from continuing along that line? So in doing this as a government, we are no longer running a social service but providing the enable, creating the enabling environment for our farmers to thrive, for investors to really come in with their resources so that they can invest in the economy of the state. With the policy firmly in place, it was not too difficult to design the requisite strategies for implementation. It's by providing infrastructural development through ramp alone, we are looking forward to as much as doing about 1,000 kilometer access road to the, to the farmland so that it will be easier for our people to really move their farm produce from farm to the factory. We are creating this enabling environment through land development also. You know, land is a premium and agriculture is practiced on, on, on land. And what we are trying to do is to create access for our intended investors and for investors and farmers to have access to land 
if you look at the nature of the land in Nekiti, yes, land is available, but the accessibility could be a little difficult. Difficult in the sense that are the land tractorable? The answer is no. So what we are doing at the level of the ministry and the level of government is to clear land, to make more land available for our farmers. And I want to say in the last 20 months, it has not been an easy one for us. Because so far, so good. If by our record, we have committed close to 3 billion naira of state funds to land clearing. And as I speak with you, go to our sites, go outside the Ado, the state capital, you see in our farm centers, in our farm settlements, and in acquired lands, we are seriously working in the field. To be able to facilitate relationship with investors, because we need to know farmers even to their farms. So we have to do the registration of the farmers, taking care of uh, even mapping of their farms, including getting every data connected that all the farmers on our platform now, we can locate them with their telephone, with their BVN. That was the first thing we did. And uh, well, the first set, we captured over almost 50,000 farmers. Though the registration is, is ongoing, because we cannot wait until we conclude before we start, uh, we start to use the data. Um, and this has been of tremendous importance and usage to all partners coming. And this is one of our achievements in the ministry so far, because there are a lot of people who paraded the corridors of farmers who claim to be farmers who are not real farmers. But what we have now is we have real farmers, authenticated ones, that we have been to their farm, we've done the due references of their farm, so we know their location, we have their addresses. So whatever any initiative that is coming from government, these are direct beneficiaries of our initiative. Like the Japanese slogan of good thinking, good product, in less than two years of vigorous pursuit of its agri-sector transformation, AKT State is leading the way as investors' destination in agribusiness. We've never been having it so good on like this in the, in the field of agriculture in AKT State. If the efforts this present government is making had been made ahead of us, I don't think where we are we will be there now. Presently, we are working with the NOSAC group that want to work on the oil palm. Presently, they've asked for about 18,000 acres of land and they are starting with about 2,000 acres with about 600,000 seedlings already available. So we are talking to farmers and talking to landowners how best we can work around the southern corridor of Ekiti State where the rainfall is a little better than the northern part and the soil is good for tree crops compared to what we have in the northern part that is more of haribu crops. We have an initiative that we are working with through CBN, 5,000 acres of land. We call it Five Star Cassava Program. Under this, 1,000 farmers are empowered are already engaged by Cassava Grass Association through the Five Star Program of five hectares per, per farm. At, at the level of uh, rice production also, currently we have about four or five investors that are already working in Nikiti. I can conveniently tell you that um, DMK Foods is already writing its factory for, for rice uh, milling. We have um, Stallone Rice. We've given them five, five hectares of land for them to have their factory located in, in Nado. A visit to some of the ongoing agro-based investments across the state clearly shows not just a state that is getting it right, but also investors who are eager to take advantage of greenfield opportunities opened up by a purposeful and forward-looking administration. Agri Limited is a key player in the green value chain in Nigeria. There is already 4,400 hectares available, while the state government is also working on clearing towards actualizing the 8,000 hectares targeted. Here is 100,000 metric tons grain holding capacity of silos. Um, Villa Magric is at the final stages of uh, concluding the concession of this facility, and um, this facility has the capacity of sporing cultivation of 25,000 hectares of grains at yields of 4 metric tons per hectare. This is aimed at touching a minimum of 10,000 smallholder families in a kitty state. Direct and indirect jobs that this will create will span from the farming, the logistics, and then um, 
uh, service provision. Currently, um, our, our partnership with the state government has created already um, service, mechanization service provision for several um, mechanization companies in the state. There are about six of them currently working with us. And um, currently, we are doing plowing, and we have achieved um, a little above 400 hectares currently. And our target is that by the close of this season, we will have at least 4,000 hectares of maize cultivated. The Villa Magro are there for offtaking the products, which are going to be stored you know, in the silo here. And from there, you can get to the markets in Lagos. So we're trying to create you know, a significant economic activity and this, to us, is about the most impactful agribusiness uh, event going on in Kitty State right now. Because if we're talking about 5,000 direct beneficiaries, we're going to bring out 20, 25,000 indirect beneficiaries, especially along the value chain support service. So we believe that uh, this is going to transform the state. And by the time we move to the second season, third season, it's going to be very, very tremendous. This is a GMK Foods rights meal. Uh, behind me. Uh, it's a collaboration uh, between the uh, Ekit uh, State Government, uh, Bank of Agri and uh, GMK Foods. Right here we'll be producing 36,000 uh, metric tons uh, annually. Uh, basically it's, it's a value chain uh, collaboration uh, whereby we'll be producing here from farming uh, to milling, and uh, also selling. So the whole process will be done here. We'll be collecting the paddy uh, from Ekiti State and uh, we'll be milling right here. FMS Farm is an uh, integrated uh, farm. Our activities revolve around cassava cultivation and the uh, cassava starch processing. We are also into vegetable production as we can see here. We are into vegetable production. In 2019, we cultivated about 400 hectares. This year, which is 2020, we, we, are, we are planning to cultivate 1,000 hectares. Actually, we've cultivated almost 250 hectares this year. It's a sustainable approach. Sustainable approach in the sense that we also integrate, integrate people from outside, which we call at Grua, whereby we have to give two, two hectares each to the farmers. And by this, we have been receiving a lot of assistance from the government. In time of the road construction from the express, that is the Mero expressway to Quara, down to our farm. Last year, we were not able to access this place because of erosion. But thank God for what the state government has done. They, they were able to help us to re renovate the road almost three, uh, three uh, kilometers from the express to our farm here. Here in the Kitty State, and especially in this farm, government has been so helpful in time of security. But the one that we also emphasize mostly is the land opening. Last year, he assisted opening almost 150 hectares of land. This year, he also is, we are here today for the opening of another 1,000 hectares. The facility here is to add value to poultry products. And this is a support from African Development Bank a partnership with the state and the private sector. The idea basically is for us to be processing live chicken here. And the capacity on that, um, this building we are looking at can accommodate like a daily about 5,000 processing built. And so we employ people, we employ farmers, the outro, uh, outgora that will be producing the bed for us. So presently, the direct labor that we have here is over 15 staffs, and we have about 527 farmers that we are still working with. We have this rice partnership, and for us to be able to cope, uh, Mr. Governor approved and uh, we sent 100 youth for training through the African Rice at IIT Ibadan in uh, seed production. Uh, they can multiply seed and we have them already on the farm, doing very wonderfully well. And uh, 40 of them was trained on uh, value addition for rice. From rice alone, they can make, make they can uh, all those cake, confessionalists, and even wine. So uh, that is part of uh, the training we had for the farmers. 
We supported Promacido with, we've done about 500 hectares of land for them to plant and uh, for feed, to, to, for them to be able to feed their cows in that place. Already, Promacido, a foremost dairy company in Nigeria, is in the process of producing meat in large quantity in the resuscitated Econ Dairy Farm in Mobile Local Government. With an investment of $5 million in the dairy farm, the company will be producing 10,000 liters of milk per day and as well employ over 1,000 workers when in full capacity. <laughs> in commercial agriculture, WICA, was one of the initiatives of the Governor Kyle Fiamin during his first term in office between 2010 and 2014. The program was immediately resuscitated but better repackaged in 2018 as part of the efforts to integrate youth into modern commercial farming in a sustainable manner. As of today, WICA is standing as an institution, as an agribusiness government institution, uh, WICA currently has about 1,200 members, and uh, these members are supported to go into agribusiness. Currently, WICA has a board of trustees, and these are things that uh, these are systems that have been put in place to stabilize the organization and ensure that there is continuity in the, in the delivery of programs. Uh, our members are supported to go into uh, commercial agricultural production in uh, uh, crops, arable crops, and uh, poultry, livestock, in processing, in uh, aquaculture, and uh, a number of uh, other agricultural value chains. Uh, currently, uh, WICAD is working with uh, uh, some of the development partners that have come into the state uh, towards uh, building the economy of the state. Uh, and uh, I can say categorically that uh, we have uh, very close to 700 of our members who are currently enrolled in these programs. This is one of the best initiatives that can happen uh, in the state. It's agribusiness we're talking about now, and uh, the only way to support young people is through initiatives like this. Uh, we're, we're, we're grateful to the state government, in particular His Excellency Dr. John Kaude Faimi and uh, the Ministry of Agriculture, who have uh, uh, seen this opportunity and uh, invited young people to be part of this scheme. Uh, the young people are the future of the state, they are the future of the economy. So coming into commercial agricultural practice is one of the best things that can happen for a state like Ekiti State that is an agrarian state. Uh, we hope that uh, at the end of this all, the multiplier effect of what we're talking about will be evident and uh, the economy of the state will grow, our members will be empowered. Tokwe Aruge represents one of the successes of youth in commercial agriculture development program today. His story is an inspirational one for all the youths in the state to appreciate what is achievable. I trained as a medical doctor, but uh, now in agripreneurship. This vision started uh, some years back as a member of the Youth in Commercial Agri-Development uh, called WICAD. It's the first time of uh, the current you know, in uh, 2012, where a considerable amount of support was offered to young people to facilitate um, commencement of startup projects 
and that was how the state government came into this project and they were able to support us with a lot of assets, a lot of land assets, even financial support. And from there we were able to grow, to be able to expand into different sectors in agri space. Yeah, that even includes uh, agri uh, equipment leasing, uh, more cultivation of farmlands. Then into this, when we got some, some form of support from Bank of Industry to purchase this high-end equipment to process cassava. Because of the support from the state government, we were able to go through with that trans transaction. And here we are with equipment available. In a couple of uh, two months, we should be able to commence um, production of this uh, facility and uh, uh, the ultimate um, um, official opening of this facility for, for, for business. Facility is to process about 100 tons of uh, raw cassava to high quality cassava flour and starch every day. And um, the expected output is supposed to be between 20 to 25 tons per day. And this we expect to cover about a thousand or more hectares of farmland, of uh, raw cassava farmland that will be consumed every year. And uh, we believe that this is just a starting point and uh, we have a um, vision in the future to expand the capacity here to be able to cover up to 400 uh, tons of output every day because it's, uh, there's a vast land available here. And uh, right in this community, we also have partners, we have farmers, we have the Nigerian Cassava Growers Association, a considerable uh, exchange of farmland for us to process around here. And what it ultimately brings to us is that most of the young people in the rural area will not find any reason to travel to Lagos or travel to Ibadan or travel to Abuja when they can maintain five to ten hectares of cassava and have a ready place to sell. So in terms of employment generation, it's multiplier effect. The farmers bring in the raw cassava, the, the people who are directly involved in selling, even the transporters, transporting people back and forth and the raw cassava as well and also the final product from here to the to the final off-taker. Encouraged by the various support and sincerity of government in working its talk about making Ikiti the investment destination and the model in agribusiness in Nigeria, the farmers are already forming cluster groups under a single umbrella called All Farmers Association of Nigeria to leverage on economies of scale and take advantage of government's robust incentives in terms of ease of doing business. We are the umbrella body. We have plowed over 250 hectares of land in Igede, uh, uh, in Yemen, of Axis. We are functioning now on the farm. They have given us security. Along that, our, our, all the farms in the ag agro, agro zone of, it, of, of it, the state, they have provided a, a, a security, not the nooks and crannies of that uh, area. We too just have to th thank them for, appreciate that, them for that, the government of Ekiti. By the grace of God, uh, any time from now we shall start planting. You know, there is a, a, that, this is the August, uh, the August draft, is on ground now. But the first week in August we start planting. I'm going to go into Ibiscos, we want to go to ginger and turmeric and, uh, and uh, the same seed and others. To support all this investment and in preparation of the volume of commodities to come from the thousands of hectares of agric land and down the value chain, the state government is already building an agro-allied cargo airport within its knowledge and agric processing zone. These ambitious projects, again, attest to the strategic thought process behind the administration's well-coined agribusiness revolution. By the time we finish with the airport, can you imagine the, the, what the flow? We finish with the airport, it is easier, it will be easier. I want to see Ekiti State waking up in the morning, you get to London, you get to America, you get to Australia, and the vegetable planted in Ekiti is sold in the British market. It's sold in the European market. This is what we are looking forward to because once these facilities, amenities, this, the enabling of the environment is conducive, in terms of security, in terms of uh, accessibility to land and other things, then definitely Ekiti will be a place of pride with the effort and with the support we are getting from Mr. Governor, His Excellency Dr. John Cardio Fahimi, 
I think it, it will go places. Wow, so much in a short while. What else should we add other than to welcome our agro investors to Ikiti State, the land of honor, and to our timid farmers across the state, a new dawn of prosperity. Talking about new investors, we also welcome to the state a new radio station, Fresh FM, owned by our own Yinka Yifele. Indeed, Ikiti is in the era of restoration. Let's quickly look at our fact file for this week. That's Ekiti on the move this week. Do join us for another episode next week. Meanwhile, you can watch this episode and previous ones on our YouTube channel. You can also send your feedbacks via our social media platforms showing on your screen. Till next week, stay safe and goodbye. <laughs> Yeah.